Today we are going to make an RC flying wing. To make the flying wing I'm going to use a styrofoam sheet of 2 inches of thickness. If you don't have that kind of foam then you can get any kind of foam and make sure it's at least 2 inches thick. So I did a design from scratch and then I used some airfoils that are supposed to have auto stabilization properties. Those are used in flying wings because of that. I'm gonna leave a link in the description of the video with the design and also the templates of the airfoils so you can download them and then print them to make your own wing. Step number one, cut the templates and make a copy on a hard material like a hard cardboard or wood. You are going to make an horizontal line representing the core of the wing. Then trace the lines of the design in the foam sheet so you can arrange all the parts in a way that you don't waste any material. I'm going to use a foam cutter that I made myself at home that you can also make yourself with some guitar strings and batteries but if you don't have one you can use a hot knife but the results are not gonna be the same. I recommend using the foam cutter with a string. The cutting of the wing is divided in two phases. The first one is to cut only the silhouette of the wing and then we're going to proceed making the shape of the airfoil. In the second phase we're going to use the templates. Make sure to align the horizontal lines of these templates with the bottom or the upper part of the sheet so everything is aligned and both wings generate the same amount of lift. A little deviation can cause the wing to fly not very well. So this is the moment of the truth in the second phase of the cutting because we're going to give the shape of the wing with these templates. It takes a little bit of practice to make a good cut. If you don't have too much practice then I recommend you to buy another sheet of foam just to make sure you will get it right. After this phase we are going to use sandpaper to sand off all the uneven surfaces and make a smooth surface ready to go. Now it's time to glue the wings together and also put the reinforcements with some wood. In the design you will see where to put the reinforcements but you can also change it or even modify the whole design if you want but it will affect the flight characteristics. I will recommend you to use epoxy glue. You can use any glue you want but epoxy is the best one because it's strong and also dries really quickly. To make the ailerons you can use the same material but you can also use balsa wood because it's much more sturdy and it won't bend as easy as the foam. After the wing is finished it's time to put some covering on it. I'm using this tape that you can buy in any hobby store and they come in different colors. I'm just going to use this orange. The covering makes the wing stronger, it's better with the aerodynamics and also looks a lot better. If you don't have this color tape you can use any packaging tape that you have at home. You can also use the tape as hinges for the ailerons. Now it's time for the electronics. I'm going to make a base for the motor, which should be the strongest part. I'm using plywood and several layers of it, so we can mount the motor in place and use some long screws without screwing up the motor. <laughs> Yeah, screwing, you know, screwing up because I'm using screw. Okay, forget it. No, but seriously, if you're using a long screw and you have a thick base, you can make the screw go farther and damage the windings of the motor. So be careful with that. Now it's time to put the servos. Oh yeah, servos are great. You know, they move things. They move like the ailerons and stuff like that. Well, yeah. And to put the servos you need to make marks and use a measuring tape just to make sure everything is symmetrical. If you don't put things symmetrical, the earth will explode. Well, not true, but uh, the, f the wing might be affected a little bit and also the ailerons will behave a little bit differently. Anyway, it, it is not a big deal, but just make sure to put things symmetrical just for the sake of weight distribution in the wing. shape 
that I'm cutting out of this uh, wood is to make a micro fuselage where I'm going to put the receiver and other components. But you don't need that if you want to put everything inside the wing. As you can see, it will also help to sustain the motor base in place. I just need to set up the remaining electronic components. Also make some holes and adjustments. Finally, right here I'm doing the last adjustments to go and fly this thing away. The test flights were a little bit annoying. This is the first time I'm building this kind of airplane. And most of the time I launch airplanes with fuselage. But this one, I have to grab the rear part and the motor is not spinning because I can chop my finger. So I had to just launch it gently into the air to make it glide a little bit and see how it behaves first and then make serious flights after I'm sure how it behaves but the center of gravity is a mess and it's really hard to make a wing like this to go really really stable in flight so I had to experiment a lot and also launch the wing like this I know this is not the correct way of launching a saggy wing but for the test flights it did the trick The next days I was improving the launching technique and also I went to a bigger place to fly the wing and it was flying really good and actually was surprised on how good it was flying. I also changed the system from FR Sky to Fly Sky because it's a cheaper and lighter controller to carry around. Then I made some space for an FPV camera that I will test later. Then I had the opportunity to go to the beach and fly there. There was a lot of space and also was windy. I figured out that the wing is not very good when it's really windy. At some point I broke one fin and I tried to fix it, but in the end I decided to take these fins off on the tips of the wing and just leave the inner part fins or vertical stabilizers or whatever you want to call it. It was supposed to be less stable, but actually it was surprisingly very stable in flight with just these small fins in the inner part of the wing.
also went to a mountain to fly there and there was a combination of a lot of wind and also turbulence caused by hills surrounding the place that the wing didn't support very much. I mean, the wing is already unstable with its really critical center of gravity and when you fly it in a turbulent place, it is really mad. So don't try it. I mean, you can try it, but it's not recommendable. Uh, you can fly normal configuration airplanes in turbulent places and it's still not recommendable, but for a wing, it's not good at all. And finally, I'm going to use the FPV system to fly with my goggles and see how it goes. This time I'm going to use the new technique to launch the wing and it works really good. Sometimes it didn't work that well, but it went well most of the times. that flying FPV has some advantages that flying with line of sight doesn't have and one of the advantages is that I can go farther away without losing the line of sight and also losing the perspective or notion of where I'm going or where the wing is going in this case. Without the FPV system I will be limited to my line of sight so I cannot fly behind trees or things like that and also I will fly closer to me just to maintain a good perspective of where the wing is flying, what altitude it is and also because it goes really small when it is far away so it's really hard to uh, figure out where it's heading to and things like that. Catching the wind in mid-flight is a really good practice, so that's what I was doing because it's also really fun. I had a battle with one dog as well. He wanted to catch the wing, but I won. Okay, it's time to crash the wind at high speed into the ground and finish this video. I hope you liked this very much and if you did, push the like button and also consider subscribing because you will miss a lot of shit if you don't subscribe. See you in the next project.